Ladies and gentlemen, what is happening? Welcome back to another Scarlet and Violet Wi-Fi battle. Today, I've got a doozy of a match for you. It turns out to be a really fun one. And uh, my opponent has a extremely scary team. Honestly, Jason over there has got some absolute heat. But what I have on my side is some rain to hopefully cool it down. As always, if you're new to the channel, consider hitting that subscribe button. It would really help out. And it'll only take you like a second, so you have no excuse. Let's go ahead and get into the match. So my opponent is going to lead off with her Ogre Pond. And she is not looking good for my team. I'm going to be honest. Specifically... For the Gastrodon. Honestly, if I'm a real life slug, basically this Ogre Pond is a salt shaker and I gotta get my ass as far away as possible from this thing. Um, my best kind of answer here is to go into the Pheasant Dippity. I know I can kind of take any attack this wants to throw at me and figure out what type of Ogre Pond, you know, this thing is in the process. So, uh, I do bring in Laser Beak looking like the Transformer Bird from that one Transformers movie. Someone knows what I'm talking about. But, it turns out to actually be a lead Ogre Pond who does set up the spike. So, that is mostly annoying for my team because I don't have any way to get rid of that, actually. I don't have a defogger or a spinner on this team. I'm just straight up offense, baby. So, um, I do know that this thing cannot touch me, and the Ogre Pond is super important for their team at this point. So, I'm going to predict the switch and go for a U-turn, as they do end up bringing in the Iron Treads. And I'm honestly fine with that because I can pivot and grab myself a matchup. It all just kind of comes down to basically what resources I want to start using here at this point. Of course, my team being rain-oriented... Uh, I do think that Politoed can come in here pretty nicely, but I want to kind of play it safe early on and try to conserve my resources as much as possible, as Gastrodon actually has a pretty solid switch in here. Um, if this thing wants to stay in, it's going to have to basically deal with the wrath that is the East Cargo. I'm out here representing the East side, and I would like to get my Stealth Rock. I don't know if this thing wants to stay in it. Rapid Spin. Uh, regardless, this is just kind of a safe switch at this point, and I'm going to end up going for the Yawn. I do expect them to switch out. And I'm thinking Ogre Pond just probably comes right back in because, of course, we are allergic as shit to grass. And if this thing breathes on me, I will die. So I do predict that switch to come in. And the Yawn, while not putting it asleep immediately, is kind of going to put their back to a corner where they have a decision to make here. Either they can go for an Ivy Cudgel, which if I stay in will, of course, knock out the Gastrodon. Or they're going to be forced to switch and not allow that thing to fall asleep. So what I'm going to do is just go right back into the Pheasantipity. It's really just kind of my safest play at this point and uh, I'm honestly hoping that they stay in and let this thing fall asleep because like I said Ogre Pond is a problem to my team kind of depending on what this thing set is but I come in and take some spikes as they decide to throw some more spikes on my side and that means I'm gonna be stepping on all sorts of Legos in the middle of the night every time I switch in um, but what that good news is is this thing actually does fall asleep so I'm figuring if they do opt for letting the Ogre Pond fall asleep that kind of means that maybe they actually just stay in here so I'm actually just going to end up going for the Moonblast here. Um, if they do decide to switch, Moonblast hits pretty decently. I don't want a Sludge Bomb just in case the Iron Treads comes back in. Uh, but they do end up just staying, take a nice little little sleepy snooze turn, and uh, a Moonblast is going to do a nice chunk to this thing, which is what I need to do. I really need to whittle this to the point where I can put it in either Ice Punch range from the Polyrath, um, or like a, an Ice Beam, something like that. This thing at full health is just a problem. So. Now I decide to go for the U-turn thinking they probably don't stay in here and take a Sludge Bomb. And they do actually go into the Iron Treads predicting that Sludge Bomb. But I've been afraid of this asshole coming in. So instead I go for the U-turn and all is looking pretty well. So I figure, alright, enough time has passed. I'm going to come in and just make it rain on some hoes. And it is time for the Politoed to make it happen. I've got my Damp Rock and a Dream. And that means the rain is going to be sticking around for the 8 turn. So... I come in looking like I'm cotton candy bubblegum flavored and I have a pretty solid matchup here as a weather ball in the rain is going to do a lot to the great, or not the great, the I guess normal tusk iron treads. And uh, this thing is still around full and I think I can take an attack that it wants to throw at me. So I am just going to go for the weather ball here at this point. Honestly, I really like weather ball uh, polytone as it does honestly pretty solid damage. So they're going to end up switching that thing out. Do want to conserve that mon as it is a bit of a threat. And back comes the Ogre Pond. We're getting a whole lot of switch action here where <laughs> the Ogre Pond is just coming in for free. And uh, the Weather Ball is not quite going to finish this thing off. But what this does is gives me an opportunity here. I can essentially bank on the fact that this thing might not wake up and try to finish it off with an Ice Beam. Or I can switch. Um, but I decide I'm actually just going to stay in and hope that this thing takes another sleep turn. It's already burnt one. So there is a chance that this thing wakes up, but I'm just going to be like, you know what, you're going to stay sleepy. So I go for another Weather Ball here, and it actually just wakes up, which is really bad for me, because an Ivy Cudgel does take care of the Politoed, and I definitely should have switched there. I just really wanted to get some more momentum on my side, 
And now I have to essentially just deal with the rain that I have. My swift swimmers are going to have to kind of just take advantage of whatever's left. I really should have conserved the polytoad there, but I was thinking there's a good chance it just stays asleep and I knock it out. But it did not work out on my side at that point, but now I decide to bring in Sharp Ballin. Overquill does have some rain turns to work with here. I can easily outspeed the Ogre Pond and honestly have a pretty solid matchup on their team coverage wise. I would like to set up a Swords Dance, but I don't really know what this thing would want to throw at me. So instead, I do just go for the Liquidation here as they're just going to switch into the Basque Legion, uh, who is looking pretty badass and shiny. And this thing in the rain is also a threat. However, them not being a rain team, uh, a Liquidation is going to do a nice chunk to this thing. I actually grab a Defense Drop, which is honestly insane. Uh, which should definitely put this thing in range to where a crunch should take care of it. So that's exactly what I'm going to do. Take a nice little grizzly bear bite out of the fish here. Call me Grizzly Ballin. That does take care of the Basque Legion. Huge threat out of the way. And uh, I am still in a great position here. The main reason why is because I do have an answer, sort of, for the Iron Hand. So here's the plan. I am actually carrying the, um, the Terra Ghost on this Overquill. Just basically being able to try to grab some momentum on fighting moves. So I'm going to go for that Terra Ghost, hoping they go for something like a Drain Punch, and this will allow me to go for a Poison Jab. The reason why I don't want a Swords Dance here is actually because even after a Swords Dance boost, a Liquidation in the Rain is not quite enough to Oko and Iron Hands, depending on the set. So I'm going to play it safe here. I do go for that little Terra Ghost action, and it is gonna work out for me. I go for that Poison Jab, it's gonna do some solid chip damage to this thing. I do also get a Poison, which is awesome, and they do fall for it and go for that Drain Punch. So that essentially gives me a free turn here. I'm also just concerned about how much damage I take from like a Wild Charge, uh, which is kind of what I'm worried about this thing having. So at this point, I can go for Liquidation in the rain, and I've chipped it to a pretty decent range, but still, it's not quite gonna be enough to knock this thing out because Look at, the, look at the size of this dude's hands. My dude is thick as shit. It's able to take it pretty nicely. Um, and I am actually able to live an attack, which is pretty solid. So uh, this is going to allow me to basically finish off the Iron Hands, which, again, this is one of the scariest Pokemon for my team. So being able to allocate some resources, allow the Overquill to take care of it, uh, does actually put me in a pretty good spot kind of moving forward. So going for the Terra there, in my mind, was worth it. And the Rain is going to go away. So... Swift Swim shenanigans are going to be over with, but now they decide to switch into whatever they want, and they're going to go back into the Ogre Pond, who, you know, is pretty quick with them little stick legs. So this thing should be able to finish me off here, and I don't really have a whole lot of options in terms of switching into this thing. Honestly, Ogre Pond, even without one of its masks to change its type, it's still a pretty big threat. Uh, so I'm just going to go for a Poison Job here. It's going to finish me with a knockoff, but the Overquill was able to essentially break the team and make it a whole lot easier uh, for my kind of sweepers I have in the back to try to make some stuff happen. And if there's anybody that makes shit happen these days, I'll tell you who it is. It's straight up Shiftry. This thing is an absolute beast with this new ability. I've been having a whole lot of fun using this mon. And I'm going to go right into the Pinocchio here. I'm feeling like the matchup against the Ogre Pond is honestly pretty solid for me to try to set this thing up. And I figure if I can't get any rain bullshit going for this team, I might as well try to get some wind bullshit going. So I come in. I do take some spikes here, and I know that this thing can't basically Oko me. So I'm going to go for that Tailwind as they just set up another layer of spikes. The spikes are out of here stacking up, but now you got to deal with a Shiftry who is going to be not only extremely fast for the next few turns, but also with a nice little attack boost. So the Tailwind blows behind me, flying around like a kite, and the Wind Rider does activate here. So essentially all I have to do is go for the knockoff, and the main reason why I want to set up the Shiftry at this point is because... I'm really feeling like I can catch a couple of their Pokemon off guard, and you're going to see why. So, I finish off the Ogre Pond with a knockoff, which is great. And now they have a free switch into whatever they want, and they do have a few things that look great against the Shiftry, who might not actually be that great against the Shiftry. So, in comes the Iron Treads. And this is a Pokemon who definitely resists uh, a lot of what I have to do for it, but that is exactly why we carry the low kick damage on this bad boy. It's the main reason why there's a lot of checks to Shiftry that basically get taken out by low kick. So I low kick his heavy fat ass right back to the buffet, and that does take care of the Iron Tread. So being able to catch that thing off guard is amazing, and uh, Shiftry is doing exactly what we needed to do with that Wind Rider boost. Uh, so now they're going to switch into whatever they want, and Heatran comes in, who honestly is the main reason why we have low kick on this thing. But them going into this at this point basically tells me, okay, they have not committed their Terra yet, and they know a low kick can absolutely just obliterate this thing. So I'm going to instead go for the knockoff, predicting them to go for some type of terror to just 
get out of that type that locate kills. So they do actually commit the Terra here, and I'm able to read that nicely. And a knockoff with the attack boost is going to do a lot, no matter what kind of Heatran this is going to be. Um, while it will allow, you know, essentially this thing to knock me out in return, the chip damage on this is essentially what I need at this point. So I go for that knockoff, and it actually damn near kills this thing, which is honestly kind of crazy. With that Life Orb recoil, we get rid of his leftovers. And sadly, a Magma Storm is going to knock out the Shifri. But taking care of the Iron Treads and essentially weakening the Heatran to the point where anything else can knock it out uh, does allow me a way more easy endgame, hopefully. So, they do still have one Pokemon in the back, and I am quite worried about that thing, and that is going to be the Sinistra. And realistically, we know what Sinistra can do. That thing is such an absolute defensive monster that I really do kind of need the Pheasantipity to be able to finish it off. So... What I'm going to do here is, I know that I'm faster than Heatran, I can essentially just knock this asshole out as he's, you know, weak to it with the cute little flower on his head, and now it is me against this teapot. And I've really been trying to kind of conserve, conserve answers for that Sinistra because it is a threat, but the best Pokemon I have for it is basically out here. I did already take my, uh, my spikes damage, so recovering that off is going to be nice, and I'm super specially defensive and kind of the best fit to handle this thing. So, Sinistra comes in. And essentially what I do here on turn one is go for a sludge bomb trying to basically proc a poison. I, I realize getting a regular poison with the sludge bomb actually would not be ideal as a moon blast is kind of my more optimal play here as it goes for a comp mine. So this is definitely going to be the type of Sinistra that I expected. It's probably going to have reliable recovery in the form of strength sap. And essentially my best way to kind of break this is going to be with Pheasantipity's uh, ability with that toxic chain which is going to hopefully be able to get a bad poison on this thing. So I now go for the Moonblast. That's also the best option for me to do because of the special attack drop. Um, it's just neutral as well. And so the special attack drop is nice because even after a combine, now this thing is sitting at plus one. And plus one is not quite going to be enough for Shadow Ball to kind of reliably whittle down the Pheasantipity. So I haven't quite activated that Toxic Chain yet, but if I can basically just get that Poison on this Mon, I can kind of solidify the win. If you're unfamiliar, Toxic Chain does actually give you a, a Toxic Poison, so it racks up over time, rather than like Poison Touch or just a Sludge Bomb Poison, it's just going to be normal. But we do actually get that Toxic Chain, which is amazing. We give him a bad Poison as they do go for that Strength Sap. So while my attack isn't super great on this thing, um, it does still have enough to basically recover this asshole back to full. And uh, I'm honestly just feeling mostly fine because with that Toxic, I do still have a couple Pokemon in the back that uh, if this did want to draw out, I essentially just put this Mon on a timer, right? That's kind of the best way to handle uh, a defensive Sinistra is if you can just get a Toxic Poison on it. Um, it's not going to be able to kind of outlive you. So at this point, I've got to let Pheasantipity just do his Pheasantipity shit. And that is just kind of be specially defensive. He does go for this Shadow Ball here. I believe still just at plus one. It does do less than half, which is... Honestly, great. And plus, with that recovery, I'm looking pretty nice. And the Toxic Poison is going to start to rack up on the poor little, uh, the poor little Matcha T here. So, long story short, the combination of, like, Moonblast special attack drops, the natural specially defensive bulk of this Pheasantipity, and the bad Poison, the Sinistra, doesn't have a great way to kind of finish the game, even if they are able to end up knocking out Pheasantipity. Uh, in the long run, I can I do still have faster Pokemon in the back, plus the Toxic at this point is starting to rack up. So after that last Moonblast, I actually get another uh, special attack drop, which allows me to take this next Shadow Ball nicely. He drops my special defense, and there's just like a whole lot of drops and shit going on. But after this, uh, this bad Toxic Poison, there's not really much this Sinistra can do. So they are going to end up running in the long run as uh, this Pheasantipity kind of finishes off the matchup. So that... It's going to be the end of the game, ladies and gentlemen. Thank you very much for watching, as always. Leave a like on the video if you did enjoy. And while this was a longer one, I appreciate all you guys who stuck around to the end. If you did watch to the end, let it be known that you are a real one. And comment T, and I'll like, like the comment or something. And I'll see you guys next time. Peace out.